I know I was self-destructive. I've been involved in police helicopter chases. Uh, I've been very damaging to my, to my relationships and my marriage. Yep. Um, addictive personality. You don't just go through trauma, and this is for everyone listening and experiencing this, and then come out on the other side, empathetic, compassionate, and be able to read people and sell things. Yeah. There's that whole dark trough that you go through. What happened in your life uh, what are the negative impacts that that had on you? Yeah, really great question. And, and since we're going so deep on this, uh, I, I feel safe to open up. Is where I, what I did is running away from that pain, right? Luckily, I ran towards just wanting a comp. I just wanted money out of the way. I saw my family suffering, and I put head down, and it was all about accomplishment, making money, and I I obsessed on being in control of my life, like. Moving 19, 20 times by the time I was 20, leaving step-grandparents that loved me and I had to leave them. Step-brother that I liked a lot, had to leave them. Had to leave a school and all my friends. It's like I always felt like I was, I was at the mercy of people making bad decisions. I love my parents, but like all your bad decisions reflect on me. Yeah. And I was like, screw that, I'm gonna be in control. By 17, I was completely self-sufficient in my own apartment. By 25, I retired my mom. By 30, I retired my dad because I didn't want their opinion. I knew if I cut them a check, they'd have to listen to me. I'm just being honest. Sure. Right. So I had that obsession. In my 20s, I was obsessed with like dating uncontrollably. Like I need to conquer. Like see a pretty girl, I want that girl. She's gotta be mine. Like so it was money and that, and I didn't go down the road of drugs. I drank, but I didn't go down the road of drugs. I didn't get in trouble. It was more of like, and I was the one that wore this badge of honor. Like I'll sleep when I die. I could work till nine o'clock at night, shower, eat, be out till three, four, five, six in the morning, get up, go again, and just go hard, mm. right? Um, and I made, I made bad decisions in my relationships. I, I ended up being in a relationship that didn't work out, and, but I had two amazing children. It was flawed from day one. Um, she's a great lady, nothing, had nothing to do with her, right? Just yeah, bad it's, choices it's by us. me, yeah, it was choices bad choices made. by me, but I had two amazing children. When I had my children, I would bet to say there was two instances in my life that made the biggest shift for me, is I always put on the face, I always manage my parents' emotions, I met, like, I'm really good at managing everyone's emotions. Mm. Like, and you're probably the same way. Yeah. I had to when I was a kid. I'm a people so, pleaser for that reason. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the first thing was having a child. It was unexpected, all of a sudden I'm having a baby coming. And I, all those things that happened to me, I said, I'm not gonna let that happen. So I stayed in a relationship, became super dad. Stopped working weekends. I, I have two incredible children that I'm completely emotionally engaged with. I've interviewed 50 great dads. I've read 100 books on parenting. I have family meetings. I have engaged children. They're amazing. They're, I'm just, I'm, I'm really blessed. When people say, and you know this, people say, oh, you're so lucky your kids are amazing. It's like. It ain't luck. Yeah. Like what we focus on is what we get. You're in amazing shape. You don't get that because you're not focused on it. Right. You have an amazing family. You don't get that by accident. You've gone through a hard thing because it was your focus. What we focus on is what changes. If somebody's making a lot of money but they're 300 pounds, they're focusing on the money. They're not focusing on that. Business is crushing, unfaithful, and <laughs> relationship at home. You're just not focusing on it. Yeah. So my focus is, was on my kids. So now. I'm not in a loving marriage, but I have a friendship and co-parenting thing, and my focus is my kids and my business. So now business is growing, kids are great, and the only thing missing was love in my life. And I just said to myself, you know what? I screwed around so much in my 20s, and maybe this is my payback. Sure. I deserve this, sure. right? Karmic justice. <clears throat> Karmic justice. Sure. And then this other part of me is like, listen, I was that kid who lived in a bathroom, who had no lunch money some days, and I, I'm yeah, more, revenue coming in that I could ever have imagined. I have an incredible team. I've made an impact in the world. I'm friends with all my heroes. People like Tony Robbins, now my best friend. And then I got to a point where I started justifying. I said, if I don't have love in my life, that's okay. I don't wanna be greedy. And then like everybody, there was just one day, like I had thought about leaving my relationship every day for at least five years. Every single day I'd wake up. And again, nothing to do with her. This is just the way I felt. And one day I knew it was enough. I had to leave. There was zero doubt, zero question. And all the that I didn't work with, that's at the end of it when I met, mm. when we, you and I talked to yeah. you. All of the things I, I tucked down, like how I explained it, and, and I hope this is helping people because I'm, I'm being really vulnerable. I've never shared this on camera. All the stuff I felt like I tucked being molested. I tucked the craziness I went through with my dad that no one knows. It's beyond what anybody could imagine craziness, not good dad, crazy dad. 
I tucked all that into like a champagne bottle and I had that cork on so tight. tight. And I move out of my house, I move into a new home, and I walk up the stairs and it's really quiet. I'm used to my kids being around every day. I make my kids breakfast, I take them lunch, I pick them up from school, I coach Little League, I coach softball, Sunday meetings, all of that. And that was the only place I found love. All of a sudden it's my couple of days without the kids. I walk up the stairs and my daughter's shoes are sitting there and she's not in the house. Mm. And the cork of that champagne bottle popped off. And I tell you, like, feelings I've never, like, it's hard to even talk about it. Like, it was, I went into straight anxiety. I've never had an anxiety attack in my life. Like, I've been anxious, but I had straight up anxiety crippling, like, like, losing my mind. Like, holy <laughs> I'm 40 something years old. I made it through this time, I'm done. Like, I thought I was going crazy, Bedros. I couldn't handle the anxiety. I wanted to just go hug my kids. I wanted to drive to the school and just like stare at them and just hug them. I didn't want to go back to a relationship. I knew that wasn't the right thing. I was losing my mind. Luckily, I, I flew to my, I flew down and spent two days with Tony Robbins and Tony went through a similar thing and he shared. I went and spent two days with Dr. Amen. I got a, a great therapist. I talked to her. I started yoga, started meditation, started journaling every day. I did all the stuff we know. And still I was coming unglued. I start, I, I don't take medicine, but I was popping Xanax twice a week just so I could go to the office and not look like a train wreck. I was drinking wine every night, two glasses of wine every night to hopefully fall asleep, mm. walking around. And, and this taught me a lesson that I hope you can take from this, is our next level of life lives on the other side of the thing we fear the most. You've heard it, you've seen it in books, but maybe the first time ever you could see this in my face that I knew, it's like, the analogy I had is like, let's say this is a storm. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's like a tornado and you're in your ship. Like this is, what, this is the stuff that goes on in my head. Everybody yeah, thinks yeah, differently. Yeah. And I felt like my ship was in the bay and I had a pretty nice ship and it was safe. And I had one of the biggest ships in, in the harbor and, and I could have just stayed on that ship, but I knew my next level of life lived over here. And the only way to get there was to turn my ship and f drive it straight into the freaking eye of the storm. Mm. And what I knew I did for the last 10 years is I tipped the front of the boat in the storm and go, nah, I'm just gonna go back to the bay. And this f overwhelming feeling like, man, your next level lives on the other side. You have to get through this. And I, I wanna tell you the reason I, my empathy and my heart and my impact and the reason I'm pushing so hard and Tony and I are partnering up on something that's gonna help change the world is because, man, I had access to people like you and Tony Robbins and Dr. Daniel Lehman, who's the top guy, brain doc and psychiatrist in the world and all these great people. I hired the top psychiatrist in the world and I'm talking to everybody. I'm, I'm able to take off work and do yoga and all this. Like, what about people who don't have access to that. They need these tools. That's why I love yeah. what you do. Like, it's not just, listen, when you give people ability to make more money, that's great, but I want to give them all the other shit too. So the money without happiness is emptiness. Yeah. Money without fulfillment. Who would take a billion a year to never have love? Who would take a billion a year to lose one of your children? You wouldn't, right? So anyway, I, I start in this storm and man, I'm in the eye of the storm. The anxiety is terrible. Like no one else knows. I got you know, I got booked to be on stages, I had to go. I got so freaked out, I didn't want to get in elevators. I didn't want to get on jets. I, I literally was taking, like, I take private, and I'm like, I don't want to get on that little tube. And, and like, literally thought I was losing it, dude. And in that moment, you're suffering in silence because you still have to be- The, the guy. The guy. Yeah. The guy. Yep. Because where do entrepreneurs watching this, listening to this, turn to when you're writing the check, your name is on the yeah. front of the you're check. You're top of the pyramid. Yeah. Right? The top of the pyramid. And so even though you had access to the world's best in class, you were suffering in silence. Let yeah. me ask you a question, man. Yeah. And this is just friend to friend, yeah. this is no offense. Did you feel that you weren't lovable? Is that why you said I can amass money, I can amass friends, I can amass impact and influence, but did you feel like maybe this is my way of being punished? Did you feel that you were not lovable? You didn't deserve love? You know love? what? No. I and I know that, because my therapist asked me that same question, mm. I don't think I felt that. I felt I was able to love someone else on that deep level. Because I had a lot of people that thought they loved me and I'm like, well, that's a good person, but I can't go that deep. And I think it's because that champagne bottle took up so much space in my yeah. body, there wasn't yeah. enough to let that depth of love in. I was unfaithful in my past relationship. Yeah. I'll just say it and being honest, I'm not proud of it at all, but I wasn't happy and I thought maybe that would give me some happiness. So I go through the storm, Bedros, and this is the part where I wanna help you, no matter if you're going through the storm, or you need to face it, no matter what that is. And I'm not trying to be an advocate of divorce, but that was the right choice for me and my ex. She's happier now. Long story short is, 
going through it and just staying the course and focusing not on where I wanted, you know, not on the negativity of what happened, but where I could go, a compelling future, who I wanted to be as a man, who I wanted to be as a father, how I wanted to be congruent. I never wanted to be unfaithful. I wanted real love in my life. I made a list. Tony had me make this list of everything that was absolutely a must in a relationship and everything that was unacceptable in a relationship. And I just stared at that and I kept focusing. And then one day, it wasn't a transition. I swear to God, Bedros, one day, the ship came out on the other side mm. and it was all gone. Like, and it was paradise. And since that day, I'm a better man. I'm a better father. I found the love of my life. She's sitting right there. She's my fiance. I can't Lisa. wait to marry her this year. Lisa's amazing. I never would have attracted that love in my life or been open enough to, like the champagne bottle's empty now. That's the message it's I want empty, to get dude. across. If it's you empty. want that love of your life, if you want that fulfillment, you want that impact, you want that income, it's on the other side of that storm. It is, and, and just tell you right now, since then, and I've been blessed that my companies do pretty damn good, since that day, my company has doubled. Mm. My love is on a whole nother level. I'm better on stage. I'm congruent. You're messaging. D Dude, you've always been a great messenger of, of, of knowledge, wisdom, information. Your messaging has gotten even better, Dean. Well, thank you. Yeah. And it's because, but I'm congruent. I'm not the guy that everything's right. great, except for this relationship. Right. I'm not this guy that's everything's great, but I'm kind of texting this girl on the side. Like all that is gone. Yeah.